In today's video, I am going to give you a basketball practice plan that you could use with your team. This is a high school level practice plan. However, you could use it with younger and older age groups as well, as long as it's good for the skill level of your team. So let's get down and let's check out these drills. And you can also find the printable PDF version of this down in the description below, plus even more practice plans on that same link. I'll see you guys some beginner drills that you can do is just multiple level bouncing or basically passing the ball hand to hand in your fingertips. So what this is helping you with is helping your fingertips get acquainted with the ball for one, but also gets your fingers warmed up and gets you and your fingers a lot stronger for when you're dribbling. So if you've got younger players, this is definitely something that you want to teach them. Next is around the waist. You can go around the head. And you can even go around both knees if you're flexible enough, which I still am. That's good. And then just go back to the fingertips and you can mix this up. You can be doing this in front of your players and have them follow you. Okay, so the basics of this drill, you're going to be sprinting forward up to the first pylon. And then you're going to do a defensive shuffle back until you get back to that last or the last pylon you were just at. Then you're going to sprint ahead two pylons and then you're gonna do a defensive slide back to the last pylon. Now, depending on how many pylons that you have, you can set these things up the whole court and go down the whole entire court. It's totally up to you. However, when you get to that last pylon, you sprint up and then you do a defensive slide back. Now you're going to attack the rim. You're either going to go in for a layup or a shot. Now to stack this drill, level one is just the regular sprint and then defensive dribble back. Now, to change that up, we're gonna sprint ahead and then cross over to our left hand and do a defensive dribble back with our left hand. We're gonna cross through our legs and then attack the next pylon. So it's gonna look like this. So this is kind of the first quick level. and then you can make it even more advanced. So from there, this is kind of level three, is going to be dribble up, behind the back dribble, defensive dribble back, through the legs and attack. So it's gonna look like this. And then we can change this up again. Now in this one, we're not gonna do the change of direction. We're not gonna be dribbling back in a defensive dribble. We're gonna cross a few times and then explode again. close out passing with a shot. So you can do it with a shot or you can do it with a drive. So when player one passes the ball out, depending on your age, you may want to start at that free throw line instead. And from there we would have player one close out. And when player one closes out, the first option is to have player five shoot. Now this way we can teach player one how to close out, taking stutter steps at the end, closing out, with one hand up, one hand down for the pass, and that way we can teach our team, our players, how to close out without having to jump past and foul a shooter, because that just sucks when that happens in game. And then once they understand and are learning how to do that close out with the stutter steps, what we would then move to is player five deciding to take one dribble and then having him decide or her decide to go left or right one dribble left or right that now makes that defender guess which way he's going to go and react quickly so once player five receives that pass that player needs to then decide one dribble left or right player one meanwhile is going to be closing out and then needs to decide quickly usually at the last second which way to then close out to and while player five is taking that shot again teaching player one to close out with stutter steps but also closing out one hand down for the pass 
one hand up. This hand that's down is also good for being able to cut off the drive. And then we can teach how to close out without fouling. And then when this happens after that dribble, we can teach our team and our players to think for themselves and say, well, if you take that one dribble and you pick up that ball, how are you landing on that foot? Are you going right foot, left foot on the left side? Or are you stopping on both feet at the same time? Because that does matter. If you were to stop on both feet, like a jump stop, you can now pick which foot can be your pivot foot, and then you can react accordingly, take a shot fake, take a step around, and you can take that shot. Or if they go right left on that left side, they go bang bang with their feet. Now they know, hey, right foot needs to stay on the ground, left foot can pivot around, and at that point, they can take that shot fake, step through, but they, at that point, would would be learning footwork with the exact same drill as we are teaching right now. Okay, so in this drill, what we're going to be having is what we call closeout passing with two lines, or at least that's what I like to call it. So what we're going to have is two lines, one on each side of the key, and then one at the three-point line at each of the sides of the key. From there what we're going to be going and doing is having player one, in this case red, he is going to be passing the ball out to player five and at this time we're going to be having both player five red and player one red closing out and playing defense on the first two players of these lines. From there what we're going to have is a two-on-two -two game we only want there to be a maximum of three, two or three passes depending on your team and how you feel as a coach when it comes to passing. We only want to have three dribbles total and one shot. So how I like to have it done is with three passes, three dribbles and one shot. That way it's easy to do the math in our heads. The reason why this is a great drill is because now we can have a few set rules. We can have our team understand, hey, we want to do some screen and rolls, and that's maybe what we will do. And then that way we can get a couple of quick baskets on the two-on-two -two game. We could also have, when these two players are closing out, a quick pass over to player five, who will attack the key that would then possibly collapse these two players we could then have player two run around player five for a quick basket there are a lot of different options that we can have with this drill another option is to have a quick pass over to player two again before there's a closeout and then have player five blue do that screen and roll for player two we could also have that quick pass over to player two again but instead of a screen, have player 5 cut towards the basket. Because what could happen here now is this defender is still closing out. Player 1 was still closing out going in this direction, now needs to try and catch up. Meanwhile, player 2 could take a quick pass to player 5, and that could end with a layup without even taking any dribbles at all. And the idea behind this drill is to have some two-on-two -two quick games. It's a fun drill, but it's also having our players think for themselves. So how I would run this drill myself with a younger team is to give them a couple of basics, like maybe a screen and roll, and then a pass and screen and a pass and cut like I just showed here. But also tell them, hey, I want you guys to think for yourselves and to try to experiment with other ideas that can help you score in game. That way, it's not just us as coaches telling the players what to do, it's us telling the players to be creative and to basically figure out the game themselves so that when they get on, on the court, and let's say we're at the end of a play, at the end of a shot clock, and they just have to try and figure out what to do, they're going to go into a two-man game and they'll be able to score with maybe five seconds left on the clock and not be so stressed that they just pick up the ball, look around and say, I'm stuck, I don't know what to do. So as you know a regular layup is on the right side a regular layup is going to be a dribble on your left foot then you go right left and up and it's going to be like if there's a string attached from your elbow down to your knee this is not advanced this is a regular layup on the right side left right left up now how can we make this more advanced well first off you never or you're not always in a position 
to do a regular layup. You're not always in that position. Sometimes you might be on your right foot, left, right, and then up. Now this is unconventional and you might be going against what some of your coaches have ever taught you. However, if you're driving towards the rim in the middle of the game, you're gonna be in situations where you might not be able to do a conventional layup. You may have started too early or you may have started too late and you haven't hit your right spot and you need to slow down to be able to do the conventional proper layup, which could get your shot blocked. This is why I teach every single player on either side to be able to take a right step, left, right, and up, and then also a left step, right, left, and up. Like we, like I, that's just how I like to teach it because you never know what situation you're gonna be in. However, what's even more advanced than this? So what's even more advanced than that is if you were to only take one step. Now, the reason why you would wanna take one step instead of two steps is because a lot of defenders are smart and they actually time how long it takes you to take two steps. They'll be watching your feet. If you're coming down on a fast break, they'll be watching your feet to see when you dribble, when you pick up your dribble, and when you take your first step versus your second step. So if you're coming in for a left-handed layup, you'd go right step, left, right, up, if they can time that, they can block your shot a lot easier. So if you're a defender right now and you didn't know that, that's a really easy way to time a block. However, on the offensive side, if you are playing against a very elite defender or a very elite team who actually know that tip, who know to time your steps to block your shot, you need to now know that taking your two steps is going to be a hindrance on you getting blocked. So what you need to do is do it in one step. So what this is going to consist of is just basically a dribble, step, one and up. And of course, it's hard to make shots when you're on camera. However, basically one step only. This is going to cut down on the ability of the defender to block your shot. It's a much faster layup. We see players like John Moran doing this all the time because of his size. He's not the tallest on the court, but he is the most athletic. So if you can practice your two-step layup and then practice both feet on either side and then go into one-step layups and practicing on both feet, then what I mean by that is dribbling on your right, one step up, and then dribbling on your left right step up and practicing this over and over is going to help you in game to stop getting your shot blocked this is a massive massive advantage over every single other player on the court now another set of footwork that you can use is the two, two foot takeoff, but it, basically this is called the jump stop. And basically what you're gonna be doing is driving towards the rim, and then you're gonna do a jump stop in front, or hop step, whatever you wanna call it, in front of your defender. And basically what this is gonna do for you is you're gonna be driving down on your defender. If you've got a half a body size or width ahead of your defender, you can go and you can go and hop step in front, which now cuts off that defender and he's now behind you. So one of two things are gonna happen. So number one, he's gonna not be able to stop in time. He's gonna run into you, it's gonna be a foul. Number two, he's gonna be behind you. And now you're here and you can go for a regular layup or if you have the hops, you can actually just go and do a hop step in front and then go out for your dunk. Obviously, if you've got the strength, I currently do not. And then, also, what this is doing for you is it's helping stop that defender from blocking your shot. That's essentially what this whole video is about. Now, the final set of footwork that I'm gonna show you down here in the low post, still driving move, is gonna be a spin reverse. So basically, what you're gonna be doing here is, let's say you're driving on your defender, 
and you've got your defender instead of doing a jump stop where he would be behind you let's say he's kept up with you and he's now trying to take a charge or he's just trying to get in front to contest that layup or that shot what you want to do is when you're driving now you're driving you want to plant that left foot on a dribble what this is going to do for you and preferably you're doing this between their feet you're going to now spin that's one step two steps and then up for the reverse so a little bit quicker is going to be the dribbling down bang one two and up on this side now what this is going to do for you is of course you're going to be getting away from that defender quite easily when you do that spin obviously your back is going to be to that defender it's going to be very hard for him to go over your back to block your shot but also this mesh that's right here this works as a fantastic defender and what i mean by that is when you're coming off that spin and you're going up well if he tries to block you he's going to hit that mesh and if he hits that mesh guess what that's an interrupted basket whether you make that layup or not he should get called for a basket interference and because of that you get an easy layup whether you make it or not so a little bit quicker is going to be Dribble, one, two, and up. And I cannot make layups today at all. This drill is called the circle fast break drill, and we're going to be having one team of players in the middle, five players in the middle, five players on the outside. This outside set of players are going to be running in one direction. The inside set of players are going to be running in the opposite direction. From there, once they've gone around a few times, this is the coach. The coach is going to throw up the basketball towards the rim. And now the, player, the blue players on the outside, they're going to be trying to box out the red players from the inside. And then, let's say it doesn't matter who gets that ball. We want blue to get the ball because they're, bo they're boxing out. However... We want to now have outlet players. So these two inside players are going to be outlet players. And we're going to be having players two and five down here. They're going to be breaking out down court. Ideally, what we're looking for is an outlet pass to player one or player four. And then we're going to be having a pass down court to players two or player five. Meanwhile, these red players on the inside are trying to get their butts back on defense so that we can stop this fast break. So of course this is still, this is a fast break drill, but it is still teaching dribbling and still teaching heads up passing. Once the players get all the way down here, score or not score, we're only going to allow them to take one shot. We're going to be setting up that double circle once again. Coach is going to come down and he's going to be taking up another shot. We're going to be running the same thing back down on this end and we're going to keep on going for roughly about... 15 minutes we're gonna have player five do a screen or a dribble towards player one player one is going to then run towards player five this is going to be a handoff and i want to see player five roll towards the rim or to pop for a shot now for you i or anyone really you could go for 10 layups and then 10 shots and then switch or you could go for your 10 layups switch who's doing the layups and then just some kind of a rotation anyways maybe alternating every other time you're going to be the initial screener however you want to set this up but player one's going to come off attack that elbow player five is going to be then rolling towards the rim or popping for a shot now if he's popping for a shot we've already gone through earlier on in another drill we should have also gone over now when you're popping, it's not going to be you rolling up. It's just going to be a quick, because you were on this side, left foot up, turn and pivot so that you're facing player one so the player one can pass back to you. And then you can take your shot. Now if you're rolling towards the basket, what I want to see is again a bounce pass into player five. Unless he can dunk, then send up that alley-oop if you can. But really go for that catch on the left foot and then you've caught that ball right step left step and then up for a layup 
And now in this drill, what we're going to have is three different spots. So what we're going to have is a spot at the point he's going to be starting or she's going to be starting with the ball, another spot at the free throw line extended, and then another spot along the baseline. And what we're going to have is player five passing to player one, and player five is going to then cut towards the rim and do an L cut out towards that corner. At this time, we're going to have player one pass to player five, and player one is going to do a screen for player five. Player five is going to use that screen. Now what I would like him to do is to attack that elbow. And there's always a reason for this. So of course if you're running a five out offense, depending on what it's calling for, you would kind of want to go up to that spot. However, by attacking the elbow, especially against a zone defense, what that's going to do for you is draw up that baseline defender which is going to allow player one to roll towards the basket unimpeded so you can send in that bounce pass for that layup. Three man chaser. So in the three man chaser what we're going to have is one coach, we're going to have three players lined up along the free throw line extended and three players lined up along the baseline and we're going to have the coach pass to one of those three players and from there Let's say he passes to player five. What's going to happen now? Player five is going to be point guard. Player one is going to be running down court. Player two is going to be running down court. And his defender, player three, he needs to go and touch the baseline. Meanwhile, player one red and player four red are going to be running back to play defense, a three on two defense, so that now player three needs to go touch that baseline and recover so that now it's three on two until he gets back and it's three on three. Now you're probably saying, what happens if the coach passes to the wing? Well, if the coach passes to the wing, what has to happen is player four still needs to go and touch baseline. Player one needs to get back on defense. Player three needs to get back on defense. And we need one of two things to happen. We can either have player one pass the player five who's going to be dribbling it down court, or player five and one can switch spots so that now player one is going up the middle. We always want the ball to be going up the middle in case of a trap along the sidelines. So in this case, player four is still going down to touch the baseline. We have player one and three running back for defense, and we're going to be three on two until player four gets his butt back to defense. I hope that you have enjoyed this practice plan and I hope it helps your team become better. If it does, make sure to go check out the principal PDF down in the description below and you can also find more practice plans down there as well.